Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be putting emergency brake cables or parking brake cables if you want to call it that on the S10. So let's go over here and get started. Okay guys, if you've been keeping up with the S10 build, you know we just finished putting the trick chassis rear end under the truck with the disc brakes and my parking brake cables or emergency brake cables uh, were not long enough to connect on the truck and I'll show you that here in a second. So I ordered this kit off eBay which comes with two cables. They're 110 inches long. Uh, they are not stainless steel. I did check these with a magnet and you can see the cables are not stainless. But everything else appears to be of good quality. It comes with multiple uh, cable mounting, insulated cable mounting clips. It comes with the cable ends that goes on the housing right here. I am going to be using these, but uh, these, even though I'm doing this on an S10, these will fit multiple different variations for your car, and it comes with this very nice mounting, uh, cable mounting bracket. Also, it has this hooks to the brake cable coming from underneath the car, and as you can see, it has two places for your cable to go inside of here. I will not be using this. I'm actually going to, on an S10, the way it loops around, the cable loops around the front cable, and I'll show you when we get under the truck. And I'm actually, this is the best thing I could think of was to put cable clamps on there. So we'll be putting our cable together because I don't have, I don't have the cable ends that, that screw and clamp on here. So basically all I did was went to Lowe's and got a few of these or about $1.60, $2 piece, whatever. So I'm gonna cut this to the length we need. I'll be installing the cable and when I get it under the truck, I'll overlap it and cable clamp it together to make it one, one piece. And I'll show you here just one second. So what you're gonna need, um, 16 millimeter, 17 millimeter socket with a ratchet. I'm gonna be using a 5 16 nut driver for these. And if you use um, this right here, you will need a 13 millimeter with a 1 8 Allen wrench and then two 14 millimeters for this right here. So let me show you why I'm going to clamp these together like this. So let's go over here and look under the truck and you can see why I'm gonna have to do that. So as you can see, this bracket right here, you can see how the cable loops around and it ties back together. And this is where I'll cable clamp mine together. I don't have one of these and I don't have the ends to make the cable and I wanna get this done. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this bolt off. Uh, of course, I've gotta take it all the way off to get my cable out, but I'm gonna take it all the way off. When I put it on, I'm only gonna put it about halfway and that'll give me a plenty of adjustment on my cable. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start back here at the back of the truck. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to remove our spring, pull the spring out, put the new cable in. We'll run it down through the frame, just like it's running right here. Actually, this is the old bolt hole right here that goes here. So I'll put one of those cable clamps there to hold it. And then when we get to the other side, we're gonna use those other two things that I showed you to, to uh, terminate it right here. And then my cable is gonna come out here. Um, the only thing, the only thing I don't like about this kit, it's very good quality stuff, but when you look at the cable, the cable underneath my truck has a plastic coating on it. And I started to get, you can buy heat shrink tubing by the roll, and I was just gonna heat shrink this, but I'm not gonna do anything like that. I'm just gonna leave it steel like it is. So let's get set up. These are the the components I'm gonna terminate the ends underneath the truck with. So let's get set up and get this measured, get our, our hard lines put in and get these installed on the rear brake calipers. And then we will uh, look at the finished product when the video's over. So let me get you set up on the camera and we will start uh, measuring and cutting these hoses, uh, brake lines, not hoses. Okay guys, I took out the old parking brake cables now what we're going to have to do is remove this spring and put this through the hole with the nut. And to do that, we're going to have to pull this cable out first. So we'll pull this out, just like so. 
slide that down right there. Now we will put this through and put it on the spring. So let me get you set up here where you can see. This spring shouldn't be that hard to get off by hand. Okay, spring off. Sorry about that guys, I had to grab some tools here. Now, we will thread this through. You can see what I'm doing, putting the nut on there. Now let's tighten this up. Should be a 16 on this side and a 17 on this side. Double check that. It doesn't feel doesn't feel good to me. Hang on just one second, guys. Okay guys, new day. Uh, as you saw me putting the brake lines on the truck when I started to thread that nut on there, it didn't feel right. They have nylock nuts, but you you can tell when you're tightening a a nylock or a nylon locking nut that it it starts to tighten up. You can feel how smooth it should be. That wasn't smooth at all. When I got to testing the threads or checking the threads, the threads on the cable itself was a 10 millimeter by 1.25 thread pitch, and the nuts they sent me were 10 millimeter by 1.5. So I boogered the threads up a little bit and I could have fixed them, but I'm not having that on my trucks, so I sent it back. I sent it back to Amazon. Uh, I said in the first of the video it was eBay. I actually got these on Amazon and I ordered from another manufacturer, which I'm sure they all come from the same factory in China. But this time I went to my local hardware store. I got me some 10 millimeter by 1.25 nylon locking nuts and i haven't even got it unboxed yet i just got back home so we're fixing to finish out this video so i'll set you up on the tripod and i said earlier i would set you up on the camera i want to set you up on the tripod we'll get this open and we will see it should have the same components in it that uh, the other box did and i apologize my neighbors are cutting the grass today Looks the same. Looks like pretty much the same kit. Yeah, looks identical, same kit. I bet this is, this may be a low grade stainless. Yeah, it's still it's supposed to be a stainless cable. It may be stainless coated or, but as you can see, you still get the clamps, the same hardware and the same cable ends that we got in the other one. The thing I am gonna do is I'm going to take this cable out, and you can pull these cables out, guys, when you're, you noticed I pulled one out earlier, you just pull them out, and we'll set that over here to the side. And let me see if this feels, that one feels better. Let's see, this is a 10 millimeter by 1.25 here, and that's exactly what that is. So, I know that this is a 10 by 1.25, and that feels much smoother. Yeah, if you can see guys, it starts getting tight before it even gets to the nylon. And that's, these, these if you order one of these from Amazon, I encourage you, go to your local hardware store these are 10 millimeter by 1.25. And I can tell you, 
This one is a nylon locking, and by nylon locking, I mean you can see the plastic in the top. That's what locks it. You don't need Loctite. So I actually went and purchased some that does not have the nylon locking, and you can see how easily it threads on there, and there there is no slop in the thread. So that is the correct thread pitch. So I'm going to use my nuts. I think these actually have the wrong lock nuts with them as well. So let's get back over here on the tripod. I'll set you back up. We'll get these uh, we'll get these installed. Okay, we're back over at the truck, and something I did off camera is I took this piece I told you I was gonna use for the cable. You're gonna to have to slide this ferrule off of your cable. It's gonna it's gonna be the protective cover that slides in here when you cut your cable. And I actually got me some 5 16 washers because the holes in the frame. Uh, let me walk you over here and show you. I've already got one in, but I'll show you what I'm talking about on the other side. I didn't didn't put it in yet. But if I stick this through, you can, see, you can see how much, let me get my hand out of the way. You can see how much slop there is on that hole. So what I did, take it to the other side, is I took these 5 16 washers and I just sandwiched them in there. I did use a little Loctite to secure these, these aluminum nuts because there's nothing else there. But... I slid these on there, sandwiched it in there, and when you get done, it's gonna look something like this right here. You can see, I put a washer on each side, a little dab of blue Loctite, and then I run this back out because this will give me some adjustment. If I cut my cable a little long, I can always run it up some or cut a little short, I can back it up some. But I'm gonna cut it, if you look down inside of this cable end, it is, it's about probably 3 16 of an inch from hitting the bottom. So I'm gonna set you up and put my cable in the caliper bracket here. And all it is is put your, put your uh, cable through, put your nut on the backside and tighten it up. We're gonna run back through our, our hole here on our frame. We're gonna put our cable clamp here and we will measure We'll measure and cut our cable and get the cable installed. Then all we have to do is get the steel uh, steel rope or steel braided cable through there and measure it and get it hooked up. And we'll do that next. So let's go ahead and get you on the tripod. Fortunately, it worked out to be the same size tools. So we'll be using the same size 16 millimeter on the front side and then a 17 ratchet on the back. Man, that feels so much better. I knew when I started threading it on there that it, that it didn't feel didn't feel smooth, but I thought, you know, sometimes those nylock locking nuts, they are, uh, they tighten up, but that, I mean, it felt like it was actually cross-threading in which it, in, in a sense it was, it was the wrong thread pitch, so it was just chewing the threads off that aluminum. I wish the other thing on this quality of this, it looks to be pretty good quality, but I wish these cable ends right here were actually steel. But, I mean, for what you pay for on Amazon, you get what you pay for, you pay for what you get, right? You could spend a little extra money and get the wheel woods, but, I wasn't gonna wasn't gonna do that, so we'll give these a try. These are supposed to be exact replicas of the wheel woods. Okay, that is aluminum, so I'm just gonna snug it. Looks good. Now let's get our marker, get set up to mark the cable, and we will mark it and cut it. Okay step get your nut on there and just snug it up you don't have to tighten this is not the final install snake your cable through your frame we'll come back and we'll put this clip on on the last uh last part of the video so i'm going to set you in here and show you next step is going to be measuring the brake cable and basically all i did was run it through the frame and i told you this coupler 
has about three sixteenths of an inch, but also you have adjustment. Can't see from my hand, but you have adjustment right here. So I'm going to make sure that I've got plenty of cable. Looks good. This thing doesn't flex any, so it doesn't need a lot of flex. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna cut me just a little extra. Just like that. And I'm gonna mark it right here. And that should give me the 3 16ths that I need. We'll cut it and get it installed. You guys can see, that's what I did. I just marked it based off of this measurement right here. So let's go get the cable cut. Okay guys, I just found something I wanted to call your attention to before you cut your cable. I've already cut mine, but I noticed something didn't look right. See what's going on here? Even if you clamp it right here, it's gonna be touching or very close to the tire, so you'll actually need another clamp up here on the frame. If you're gonna run it outside the frame like this, but also what you can do, what I noticed, I've already got this one installed. And luckily for me, this cable will fit the other side and have plenty of room. But if you look right here, there is a hole in the frame. So what I'm gonna do is on this driver's side, I'm gonna run this cable up this way. It's gonna go behind my gas tank. And I'm gonna secure it to the inside of the frame rail to my my uh, brake line and that way if you look it will keep it out from under the uh or keep it from rubbing the tire i mean you can put you a clamp right there as well but i've got plenty of length with this one left it's going to have to go on the other side because i can't i can't run it the way i want to do it on this side without it getting into the tire i didn't cut enough slack so be careful make sure that you Fit your tires on your wheels and you've got a, plenty of space in between your brake cable. You might could even, if you wanted to, you could run it up to the frame here and attach it if that's something you want to do. So let me get this completed, then we'll get the cables installed and we'll go underneath the truck and get everything hooked up. So stay tuned. Okay, now guys, we are going to put our cables in. First thing we gotta do is get our springs back in. We're gonna run the cables up through the frame, come out underneath the truck, and I'm gonna join them together and show you how I've done it. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a slow motion tour. I actually, you can see I didn't go up in the frame like I originally talked about with my cable here. I put a clamp there, and that give me some room. If I ever go with a wider tire, which I plan to, that gets my cable up under my frame rail and it comes back out to the original location. But again, I'll show you all that in uh, slow motion when we get these brake cables in. First thing we're gonna do is stick that spring down in here, put our cable in, cut it, join it at the front, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So stick around. Okay guys, I got my cable measured. I've got you set up on the vise. There's many ways to cut this cable. You can use these cable cutters. I never had any luck with these right here because it, these are cheap ones anyway, but it frays the ends of the cable real bad. You could also use your cutoff wheel. But the easiest thing I found is get you a good sharp chisel. And I'll show you how easy it is to cut this cable. So I made my mark. You can see that yellow paint right there. I had to use a paint marker because Sharpie, this thing has oil on it and it didn't want to stick very well. So make sure you have your safety glasses on. Put your chisel on the mark. Should be able to, oh, with one swift blow. And it is that simple. Let me get this to focus. You can see 
There's no frayed ends. I am gonna take and clean this up with some acetone or brake clean. And I'm gonna put me a little layer of silver solder here to keep these twines from coming off, these little individual wires. Or you could take a piece of heat shrink, uh, just cut your little piece of heat shrink, heat shrink it on here and heat it up. Just something to keep that from fraying out and uh, might get, get you while you're under the truck working sometime. So I'm gonna get the other one cut get them tied up on the truck and we will show you the finished product. Okay guys, let's take a tour. So here's the passenger side. You see the cable and how it runs up and what I was gonna show you, how I routed my cables. I decided not to go through that hole in the frame, but rather I come up and put me a clamp underneath here and then come back to the original clamp hole and then went through the original cable routing and as you can see that's how i use that end with the washers and i'll show you the other side what it looks like with a tire so for those of you wondering how wide of a tire can you run you can see i have plenty of space and i also this goes up underneath it so if i had a wider tire even if the tire was out to the to the frame close to the frame it wouldn't wouldn't get into the cable and i did the same thing here put a cable underneath the frame one on the factory and then the cable mounting now let's go under the truck and i'll show you bear with me just a second I'll show you how to put the cables together so what i did is your cable comes out here, goes to the bracket. So what you wanna do is make sure you leave enough threads off of this bracket here. Back this nut up so that your bracket has enough adjustment so you can tighten these cables. And that goes up to your parking brake lever inside the foot lever inside the truck or your emergency brake if you wanna call it that. And here's where the bunny shot is. This is how I fastened my cables together. I did put me a piece of heat shrink to keep it from unraveling right here. And then I just put two clamps on here to tighten it up. And that's what it looks like. So now, this, I adjusted it to where there's no tension on the, uh, on the brakes. But let's go in here and let's see if it works. So let's look at the springs. They're completely, they're completely on the stops. You can hear them touching. So let's open this up. Push that down. And voila, the springs collapse. And that's gonna do it for the video, guys. That's how I put my e-brake cables on my truck and got things going. Sorry it took so long to get a video out. I have been on vacation, had things going on, life happens stuff like that. But uh, next video, I've got the look-alike or the clone of the Holly 302-1 oil pan that we'll be putting on. And hopefully we'll start trying to fit the engine in and I wanna see how much the springs compress on the front to see how much we're gonna lower it. I've got the two inch blocks on the back. We're gonna try to get it level, but we'll get it going. If you like this content, first time it did hit performance, hit that like button. If you, uh, if you wanna see more, subscribe. And I appreciate you guys for coming back and I'll see you guys in the next video.